Okay, this is peace brewing. This is the way I do it. This is the lotter tank. This is the mash tun. This is the boiling pot. I like to keep the footprint small. Really, my brewery starts here and, and, it, and it's basically an eight by eight square. So if you have eight by eight in your garage, in your house, you can build a brewery just like this. Okay, we start over here with the grain. These are the base malts. These are the specialty malts. This is how we measure it out. I don't mill my own malt. I use milled malt so when I pour it, it causes dust. I hate dusting, so I put in uh, an exhaust fan to, to suck out the dust. I can also measure my hops here, measure my grain here. When I close it up, all nice and neat. Okay, now over to the brewing section. That is my chiller. This is my one pump. I know a lot of people have three pumps, but I don't need it. I only need one pump. It's all gravity. So basically, I get rid of my boiling kettle for the mashing process. I lower my lauder ton. Okay, my water is, the, the water is filtered going through the, the, the water heater. The water heater heats this water up to between 150 and 160 degrees. So I can just turn it on 160 degrees. This pot is graduated. I can see where it is, so I know exactly what amount of water to put in, depending on the grain. And then I lift. And it's not really hot, but I have these. <laughs> So basically, I take my water and I dump it into my mash tun. Then I come over and I get my grain that's already measured. And I dump it into the mash tun. And stir it up. And cover it up. There you go. Now when it comes time to sparge, I do the same thing. I hang, I heat up my, my sparge water. And hook it up to my mash tun. And inside, I know home brewers know what this is. I have the auto sparge that holds the hot liquor at about an inch over the grain bed. Then I add the boiling pot. So we sparge into the boiling pot when we're done, place the thing. Clean the dump and clean that thing. By that time, we're ready to boil. This is all gas, natural gas, no tanks. It just boils. We're done. Now it's time to chill our wart. I still rack. I know I could add a valve, but I don't. Okay. 
in through the pump. And over to the fermenter. We fill the fermenter. I usually put the fermenter on top of a rack because I don't like lifting things. So I'll put this stuff aside. I'll put my fermenters up here, do two, ten, or two five gallon fermenters. Everything has a place, everything has a home. Boy. Pump, all hoses put away after they're cleaned. And then we go into the fermentation room. This is where I keep my commercial refrigerator. The compressor has been removed and brought outside so we're not fighting temperatures. I have a split system in here that keeps the room at 70 degrees. In this room, I can store my Belgians and my bottle rack that I usually, I, because I put my stout on nitrogen, I always do five gallons on nitrogen, but because nitrogen doesn't travel well, I always do five gallons of bottle conditioned stout. But this room stays 70 degrees at all times, so I can do all my fermenting in here. No muss, no fuss. My brew sessions are about four hours long, and the reason is because everything has a home. Everything is very centrally located. I have the sink, and that's what makes brewing fun for me because I don't have a lot of time to do it. <laughs> Edit as well as you want. <laughs> cool, man. Is that uh, enough?